Welcome to Computing at Home with Digital Schoolhouse. Here we're delivering out-of-the-box computing activities that are accessible, educational and fun. To all learners watching, remember you can pause the video at any time to take notes, collect your thoughts or take part in the activity alongside me. Parents and guardians, you might want to watch the next bit as it explains how to access our resources, but after that feel free to join in or sit nearby to supervise if you want to. Let's get started. For Guess Who, you'll need a copy of our Guess Who cards and you'll also need a printed copy of the first sheet of our profiles. The rest of the profiles can be accessed via our website rather than needing to print them off. Alternatively, you could potentially do this sheet on paper or in a notepad. The resources are accessed via the link below this video. If you'd prefer to access our resources via our website, go to digitalschoolhouse.org.uk, click on Resources, scroll down the page and find Playful Computing Activities, click on Activity Resources, click on Discover More, scroll down the page and find Guess Who in the list. From here you will need to print off Digital Schoolhouse Guess Who cards, or DSH Guess Who cards and profiles.pdf. Alternatively, you can click on the magnifying glass, type in Guess Who, click on Search, and the link you are looking for is the first one in the search results. Here you'll find all of the resources. Feel free to pause the video now and collect your resources together. In this activity we're going to look at why people might not be what they seem when they're online. We're also going to look at why you might not want to be sharing everything on social media. Okay, we're going to play a game of Guess Who. For those of you who've never played Guess Who before, I'm going to do a quick demonstration to explain how to play it. So normally I would have picked one of these cards. Um, and I wouldn't show you which one it was, um, but for doing a demo, it's, it's worth just going through how to play. So I'm going to choose this person here. So I'm going to start to do some descriptions in order for you to eliminate people from your set of cards. So the first thing I'm going to say is that it is a man. So that means that you can turn over all your lady cards because they don't actually um, fit with that criteria. So they're all female, so they can't be the person that we're looking for. Okay, the next one I'm going to say is that the person is wearing glasses. So again, I can start to eliminate these people and I'm left with just two. And then I might say the person has a beard. So I can eliminate this one and then you might say, is it this person? And I would say yes, because I've managed to eliminate the, the all the other people and left with one card to prove that was the person that we're looking for. Okay, we're going to play a quick game of Guess Who using one of my cards. So turn all your cards back over so you've got them reset like I had originally, like so. And we'll play another game of Guess Who and hopefully you'll be able to identify the person that I have chosen again. Okay, let's do a round of Guess Who. So first of all, the person I have chosen has long hair. The person I have chosen has blonde hair. The person I have chosen is female. The person I have chosen is not wearing glasses. And the person that I have chosen is wearing a print dress. Hopefully you have identified this person as the person I had chosen. Let's try again. Okay, this is my next one. The person I have chosen has a beard. The person I have chosen is not wearing any glasses. The person I have chosen has a mohawk. The person I have chosen is wearing a white and blue t-shirt. Hopefully you've identified this person. Let's do another round. The person that I have chosen is male. The person that I have chosen has short hair. The person that I have chosen 
is not wearing any glasses. And that's all the information I know about that person because I'm using this card. We'll talk about what that might mean in a minute. And finally, the person that I have chosen might be male, might be female. The person I've chosen might wear glasses, might not wear glasses. The person I have chosen could be anyone because I have chosen this card. So what does this mean? This activity should get you thinking about when you're talking to people online who they might be. Now they might be completely honest with you and be telling you exactly who they are and have really good intentions. They might even not tell you exactly who they are but still have really good intentions but they might not be completely honest with you and it might be because they don't have great intentions. So just be aware that people might not be who they seem when they talk to you online. For this second activity, we're going to be looking through people's fake book profiles. So you can either print the profiles like I've done, or alternatively, you can look at them digitally, but you need to look at them really carefully and read really carefully to find out which person fits in the grid. So for example, it says, this person works at Southfields Community College. So you need to read through each of the profiles to work out who that is and then fill their name in the box in the grid. If you want to, if you prefer, you could put their, the person's picture into the grid instead if you wanted to, but it doesn't quite fit, so you might want to use their name. Let's go through the answers. Aaron works at Southfields Community College. James is going on holiday today. Amber is riding her new bike tomorrow. Gary was once a negotiator at Fairyland. Belle just got engaged, John lives in Leeds, Pete has a granddaughter named Mia and Rezia goes to the gym on Tuesday evenings. Now some of these are a bit of a problem because if you know where Amber works and you also know that her new bike is going to be there, you could potentially go and take her new bike. In the same way, James has just announced to everybody on Fakebook that he's going on holiday today. And that means potentially his house might be empty and you could go and burgle him. But some of these things are also really good. So you might know that Belle's got engaged, so you know to congratulate her tomorrow. Or you might be able to ask Pete how his granddaughter's doing. Things that you post online can be really good, but they can also be really negative. So think about what you're posting, who it's going out to and what they could potentially use it for. In this activity, you've learned how to explain that people might not be what they seem online. And you've also been able to identify what should and should not be shared on social media. If you've enjoyed this activity, here are some ideas of how you could take it further. You could make your own family guess who cards using pictures of your family and friends. You could make your own fake book profile and really think about what information should and shouldn't be in it. You could do some research into your family's social media profiles and have a think about whether you think some information they've shared should have been kept secret. Thank you for taking part. I hope you had fun and learned something new. If you have any questions or feedback for me, please email dsh at uk.org.uk. Now, we'd love to see you learning computing at home with Digital Schoolhouse. Parents and guardians, please feel free to share any images or videos using the hashtag computing at home. You can use this on Twitter or on Facebook. You can find our contact information in the section below or at the end of this video. Lastly, I wanted to say a huge well done for taking part today. I'm Estelle and I look forward to seeing you next time.